back to the mating game. That's right, it is the game show where one bachelorette is going to find someone to spend the rest of her life with. Isn't she lucky? Boy, do I wish I had someone like that in my life, but uh, I do not. Well, folks, I think it's time for our ranking. That's right, our studio audience is going to rank the contestants to see where they stand in their hearts. I'm going to put my hand over each contestant. You in the studio audience, you clap for the one that you want Brandy to pick. All right, let's start with Josh. <laughs> That's a strong response, John. Okay, let's hear it for Sandra. <laughs> All right, Sandra, they like you and Bill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bill. Despite your best efforts, you still have people on your side. <laughs> well, let's get to know a little bit more about these four and do a little recap. So, let's start uh, all the way over here with Mr. Bill. So, of course, Bill is from New Orleans. He is a firefighter, and a fun fact about Bill is that he collects and assembles model cars. Yeah, that's right. I have a whole bunch of them down at the firehouse, and sometimes I just play with them, but sometimes I use them to stage pile-ups that explode and practice. I have a little action figure of me, and I practice rushing in and saving people. Well, we all have a little boy still living inside us and coming out in our adult years, but that's okay, Bill. All right, let's go over to Sandra. Sandra's from Albuquerque, New Mexico. She's a pathologist, which I just recently learned is not someone who makes paths, no. Apparently, someone who uh, takes blood and tissue samples. That makes a lot more sense, Sandra, because I was a little lost there. <laughs> and a fun fact about Sandra is that she enjoys pickleball. <laughs> well, of course, that's when you kick a pickle around, right, Sandra? It's actually a sport that I love because I can play it by myself and not annoy anybody when I keep hitting the ball and talking and talking and swearing and all that stuff one does when they're playing sports. Well, that sounds fun. It really tickles my pickle. <laughs> all right, let's go on over to... John, so John is from Brown Deer, Tennessee. He is a bookkeeper, and fun fact about him is that he is into horse racing. Now, I have to ask you, John, are you a jockey, or are you just into betting on those horse races? Well, uh, I'm just an avid watcher of the sport here. You know, if you learn about the right horse, and you put all your money on it, well, you know, you can win. It's all about knowing who's a mutter, and who's a slopper, and who's a skipper, and who's a fluffer. You know, if you, if you get the strategy down, well, you can't lose. Is that how you uh, got in trouble and met your ex-wife? Well, perhaps. <laughs> John, you did mention that you had an unsavory past, maybe cooking the books in some situation. <laughs> no, no need to incriminate yourself. All right, let's go over to our fabulous bachelorette, Brandy, and learn about her. Let's see. Brandy is from Piala, Washington. She's a psychologist. <laughs> and one of her uh, patients, Janine's in the studio audience, you can hear right there. A uh, fun fact about Brandy is she once traveled with a circus. Whoa! <laughs> Brandy, what were you doing with the circus? Oh, I was just helping them with their issues. <laughs> you know, that tracks, Brandy. That tracks a lot. Well, without further ado, let's move on to the round you've all been waiting for, the one-on-one -on -one round. Now in the one, oh! Yay. Thank you, Quentin. For nothing. <laughs> I just 
just kidding. All right, the one on one round. We're going to imagine it's been one year into these hypothetical relationships. Brandy, I want you to take the stage with each of these contestants. You're going to imagine that you're one year into your relationship. Things are going well, uh, and we'll take it from there. Well, John. Brandy. So, if we have been dating for about a year, um, I think it would only make sense that you and I would go on a vacation together. Um, have you ever been to Hawaii before? Well, I never have, but that would be wonderful. That's great. Where did you go on your honeymoon with your ex-wife, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> well, my wife and I... We your ex-wife. Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> we went we went to the Rockies. So it was totally different. Great. And Great. for this, Great. our one year anniversary in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Let's say I take you out to a luau. Oh. We're enjoying the poi. <laughs> I have a lay on, maybe. I could smell it. Maybe eat the flowers. They are edible, right? I, I didn't know that, but yes. And Perhaps I could eat them off you the way you like to lick barbecue sauce off me. <laughs> now that I think of it, there's probably barbecue sauce on, at the luau food. That's right. We're having the best time. And then all of a sudden, the Tahitian dancers take the stage. But the drums start pounding. And the noise, it starts to get to me. The flames are spinning. Suddenly, I realize that I'm ready to have a breakthrough with you. John, relax. It's I'm, okay. I'm ready to share about my troubled past. Brandy, we walk down to the beach as the sun sets. And I tell you that as a teenager on vacation, I took a trip to New Orleans. I was young, impulsive, foolish. My friend and I, we decided to light off some Roman candles. <laughs> One of them got away from us, and I watched as it sailed into the window of a nearby apartment building. <laughs> I heard a scream and someone say, Scarecrow, I always love you the best. <laughs> I thought it was my photo! Oh, well, no. no, it couldn't be. Bill. Bill. <laughs> hey, Bill, why don't you take a step onto the beach, pal? <laughs> uh, I'm sure it must have been some other. Why, it wouldn't have been Mardi Gras, 1964. That was when my mother died! <laughs> what color? And answer this question very carefully. What color was the Roman candle ball that went through that window? Well, it was bright. Ah! I hear you, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? It was neon green. Ah! The color of the Wicked Witch. That was the color. I'm so sorry. No. Uh, I ran. I ran to a small town in Tennessee where I met my wife. She agreed to take me in and hide me if I would only cook the books for her family's racetrack. <laughs> so, just to get this clear, John, um, <laughs> you directly led to the demise of Bill's family. It seems I did. <laughs> Look, John, I think I would have a really great time in Hawaii with you, but it would start to get irritating that every time we're together, it seems like a new revelation about something bad from your past comes up. I'm not divorced yet! <laughs> My wife won't sign the papers! You know what? Oh, you're at a belay. She said she won't grant me a divorce until I cook the books one last time. But I won't do it. I told her I turned over a new leaf. Good. Oh, I feel this has ruined our hypothetical vacation to Hawaii. <laughs> I hope you can still find it in your heart to love a murderer. 
<laughs> Maybe we could do a hypothetical follow-up vacation in Tahiti. Really? Because yes. I feel like with me being able to open up to you, Brandy, I, I'm starting to heal. I'm starting to deal with my inner demons. Well, maybe you should deal with your outer demon. Tell me your wife. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> what are you doing here? In Tahiti. In Tahiti. Shout well? out special guest Tabitha, his current wife. <laughs> well, I will find you so I can get my books cut <laughs> like you're supposed to do. Tabitha, I don't do that anymore. I want to be a legitimate bookkeeper. There ain't nothing legitimate about you. You know that, John. And if you do want to try to make yourself legitimate, then it ain't going to be so if you're married to two women, eh? Obviously, I can't be married to two women, which is why I need you to grant me that divorce, damn it! Do you love this little thing here? I think I do. I feel safe and open and free with Brandy. You're such a wuss. Anyway, <laughs> what I need from you then, if you want to be with this lovely lady, and you better watch out what you think you want, lady, then you need to get to the books. So how much do you want her? How much don't you want me? <laughs> I think I would leave this fictional Tahiti vacation and fly home to Piala. <laughs> Smart girl you got there. Tabitha, you're ruining everything. You ruined everything for not being a man of your word. You made a promise to me. I don't love you anymore. I don't love you either. Never did. What? Just cut my darn books. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tabitha, you made your point clear. Let's have you clear the stage. <laughs> All right, Quentin, we are going to have to cut all of that. Uh, also, you really got to do a better job with the background checks, okay, pal? I was trying to make things a little more exciting, pal. <laughs> Don't. All right, folks, sorry about that technical glitch. Well, we're back with the main game. We are on the one-on-one -on -one round. Freddie, why don't you have your one-on-one -on -one with the next contestant? Sandra, Freddie. If uh, we had been dating for about a year, I think things would be moving on and we'd be getting more serious. Is that right? It's, it is right. And so I think at that time it, it might be appropriate to introduce you to my family. I'd love to meet your family. Yes. So let's say that you came home to Pialup with me and you, uh, you met my mom and dad. <laughs> well, we have a, a lovely house, and um, my mom would greet you and give you a hug, of course. And my dad, the poor man, he always gets a bloody nose whenever he meets new people. So <laughs> she probably would, you know, have to, to excuse himself as some blood drip down. Oh, that sounds lovely. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, mom would invite you in, and uh, we'd probably <laughs> have our family favorite meal, which is uh, a pot roast. That's why I make it on dates. Um, it's my favorite. That's great. So you s would sit at the table with us, and how would that go? Well, after a year of being with you, imagine that every morning, because you don't like all the talking. You decided to give me a 45-minute session every morning where I could just talk. And then after that, it would just be a, a, a wonderful mutual exchange back and forth. And, and one of the things that I had to tell you during the session, before I meet your parents, because it's really important to me that I make a good impression. I've never really been with anybody because of what I do for a living. I only see the bad in, in the samples. I see disease and I see viruses and bacteria. 
And that makes you fall briefly in love with people? <laughs> yes, it does. Because, because you are so uh, uh, downtrodden about everything that, that then you, you need something to latch on to, to believe in something positive. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I see. Oh my gosh. It all goes back to your childhood. It does. Sandy? It is your father and mother. Hello? Watch your nose, honey. Watch that nose. <laughs> oh, who is this Mom and lovely, Dad. lovely young lady? Why, hello. Will you introduce us? Yes, I, I, I didn't know you would actually be coming on stage. <laughs> uh, yes, it appears <laughs> that Brandy's parents were in the studio audience and they want to make it a surprise appearance. So, this, these are my parents. Uh, what Charles. Oh, Dad, your blood. Don't. Oh, dear. Oh, here, use my sample here. <laughs> Look, it's a test tube, honey. <laughs> Swirl five times. <laughs> this, this person meet the five psychological patterns of the, of the derivative? Yes. Well, if you haven't exactly reached all five, Dad. What is the third derivative? Parenthood. And the second? Childhood. And what childhood derivative have you surmised from this person's subconscious? Oh, it just that she never was praised by her parents. That's right. And it appears that you're transferring that back and forth <laughs> fear, aren't you? Aren't you, Brandy? <laughs> this is, it's not about me. It's not about me. I, I, it's I, always I, about you. <laughs> That's what I've taught you. Don't yes. try to deny that aspect. Your father and I studied psychology with Sigmund Freud. <laughs> we are great intellectuals. That's why I will leave you here with my mom. I need to do this on my own. Are you sure you can? Yes. Hmm. Yes, because my childhood second derivative is strong and it's fine and it's past. Yes, it is. So get out of here, please. Very well. It worked. Well done. Well done. Watch your nose again. All right. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Carlisle. So obviously meeting my parents didn't go very well. I think they were focused on your childhood. But you see, the thing is, I've been alone all my life. I live in a lab with nothing but living tissue around me. Sometimes it's mostly dead, but the, the part that's living, I study it, and it grows, and I talk. You never experience that growth in the relationship, and therefore, that's why you artificially grow it so that you can feel some completion, because you're working with dead products all the time. Yes. And I want to live. I want to be alive. I want to be with somebody. I need a partner. I want to talk for real with somebody who can look me in the eye and I'm not studying their tissue and their pores. <laughs> Fascinating. All right, thank you very much, Sandra. Okay, Brandy, it's time for your final one-on-one -on -one with Bill. Hey, Bill. Hey, Brandy. So, say, uh, We've been seeing each other for about a year. I guess that would probably mean you hadn't been with Marsha in six months. That's right. I broke up with her like I told you I did. So you're telling me that if you and I are, say, walking along a beach on a nice evening, yeah. Strolling around, looking at the stars, hearing the crash of the waves. And then we saw in the distance, what's that, a bonfire? <laughs> sure, it looks like they've cleared an area of six feet around the stone hearth they made in order to control the flames. The, the last thing I would do is run over there to make sure they're being safe. And you wouldn't start to have a, 
a fear about not having a backup girlfriend anymore? No. No, because about two months ago or so, I would have learned who it was that killed my mother. <laughs> and you see, at first, that seemed like it might have been a big trauma that would have broken me. But instead, it was just the opposite. It gave me closure. No more do I have to wonder who it was. You see, all of these years, I always imagined that the person who killed my mother was some vague type of death figure with a really horrible monster face. And now I know for sure I was right. <laughs> <laughs> And that's given me the peace to really focus on moving forward, not even concerning myself with the fact that that little kid is playing with all of the fire starter a little bit close to the fire over there. So we could ignore the fire? Yeah! I don't care about the fire! I don't care if they back off and have water there! So it's just the two of us, then? Of course, it's just the two of us and the stars and the freaking kid. So I just might have to run over and pull the kid away and move him from the fire, that's all. But he, what if he was perfectly happy there? What if he was perfectly safe and then it was a controlled environment? Yeah, what if he accidentally rolled into the fire pit and then some jackass killed his mother? <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't let that get in the way of our day. <laughs> Yeah. Look, Brandy, I know that I'm not the perfect package that you wanted, but come here. Look at this tide pool. Imagine that there's one of those beautiful tide pools there, and right there, there's a starfish. But you know what? The starfish is missing one of its leg, probably because that jackass little kid pulled it off and threw it away. And there's the starfish with only four legs. And it looks like it's incomplete and broken forever. But you know what's going to happen to that starfish? What? It's going to grow another limb. Well, I didn't realize starfish grew back limbs. They do that. Huh? It's called pseudo-kleptopotomy. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that because sometimes when I'm alone at night in the firehouse, I just open the dictionary and pick a word and <laughs> read it out loud. You ever do anything like that? No. Okay. <laughs> anyway, the point is just like that starfish is going to be whole again by growing another leg, I'm going to be whole again. That's great because just the two of us, that's enough, right? Yeah. Yeah, because it's not right to, to date multiple people at once. It's not, and I'm never going to do that again. Yeah. He's never going to do it again. Well, I think the high tide is coming in, and it's going to wash Bill back to his seat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we just got finished with the one-on-one -on -one round, and we will be back with more of the mini game after these messages. Yay. everybody too much? Well, I never thought about that before. I mean, well, except for a couple of the contestants, there's really nobody I don't like. And do you think that also has something to do with, you know, dating multiple people at once? Well, 
I don't actually date, but... No, 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 but just, just pretend that you do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what would you do in that situation? Well, if I liked a lot of people at once, and, mm -hmm. and I, I, I didn't know who to choose, mm -hmm. I would close my eyes, like you taught me. And I would kind of listen to my body, and, and I would listen to my gut, and I would imagine myself with each of those people. Mm -hmm. And the one that didn't make me want to throw up or have a pan attack would be the one I'd pick. That's great. That's great. Well, you've done great work today, Janine. Oh, okay. Uh, you're really making great strides. Yeah, I'll send Thank you the check. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Yeah, just, just said, it's going to be double. You know the amount as usual because uh, we're working overtime. So, oh, thank sure. you. Hey, Pat. Can I talk to you for a minute? Uh, Clarice? Please. Listen, Pat, I know that things don't look good. And it, we, I should have told you, okay? Should, you should have known about this history. And I'm sorry I held it from you. And I'm sorry I blurted out this way. And I, I don't want to be the cause of your love being ruined. It's not your fault. It's, it's, it's the, I should have told you the truth from the very beginning. I shouldn't have withheld who I was or what I did. Yeah, it's all the past. But we just, you took us to start a new future. And I, I love my job here. And actually, as a, good, as a show of good faith, Clarice, could you go please stand next to Pat right now? You know, we did, we did go to prison, Pat, because even though we attempted to rob many works of art, we actually never did. We failed. And the final attempt with the Rodin under her skirt well, that was the time when we got caught. It just was very too obvious. Yeah. We were too ambitious. We were just out there in the open. Uh, anyway. Well, the Mona Lisa fell and made that sound. It did. It was so, just anyway. Yes. But uh, as a show of good faith, I actually robbed something by myself. What? A Polly. A what? A Jackson Polly. You went contemporary? The, modern? Yes, I did. I thought we were only doing... The, the, the classics. You're holding me back, okay? You always want the classics. Those museums are...